Welcome back to another video. If this is your first time on the channel, my name is Preston Ruth. I was a division one runner at the University of Tennessee. And I now post content for high school and college runners, as well as those looking to begin their running journey. This is the second video in my newest series called Tips from a College Runner, where I go in depth on different running topics and give advice. Be sure to subscribe if you have not, as I will have videos dropping every single Friday. So this video is the reality of college sports, more specifically of college track and field. So I'm gonna go in depth on the pros and cons of my experience and my time as a division one runner at the University of Tennessee. Now this video is not to take a shot at the NCAA, coaches, teammates, or anyone at Tennessee. It's just to give a real look into what it was like. So I wanna first start by saying how blessed I was to achieve this goal and be a division one runner. Only 7% of high school athletes make it to this level. So it was a huge accomplishment. And once I got there, I immediately saw the benefits of being a collegiate athlete. So I'm gonna start this video with the pros. The first one is gonna be access to resources. Everything you need is right there. That could be nutrition, could be recovery, professional development, could be mental health professionals like sports psychologists and therapists. You name it, it's there. And one thing I realized recently was that the environment was very controlled. And it's like that because this kind of atmosphere is conducive to high performance. The less uncontrolled variables there are, the easier it is to dial in your routine and be able to build success and perform at a high level. Now a pro tip is the resources are gonna be there, but you have to be the one to show initiative and take advantage of them. You have a lot of people that are in your corner that are willing to help you with just about anything for free. Seek out these resources and use them, whether that's physically, mentally, or academically. Take advantage of those resources. I think a perfect example is I don't think there's any Division I athlete that should be leaving college that doesn't have a job opportunity lined up. If you fully take advantage of the academic resources that your school has to offer, you should be able to have internships, grad school, and postgrad opportunities lined up for you. And just in general, companies love to hire athletes because a lot of the skills that we have to use in our sport transfer over into the workplace pretty well. Things like communication, time management skills, and performing under pressure, just to name a few. So be sure to take advantage of those resources. So point number two is opportunities and experience. So being a D1 athlete gives you a unique experience that not many other people get to have. You have the opportunities to travel to cool places, compete with and against world-class athletes at big time competitions, meet and network with successful people, whether that's during competition or at other events outside the track. But there are levels as not all athletes are created equal. There's some athletes that get a larger taste of this experience through performing better, qualifying for bigger meets and getting to travel more. There's other athletes that get a larger taste through their NIL opportunities, whether that's from their social media platform or their performance. But regardless, the D1 experience is real and unlike anything I've ever encountered. Point number three is community. I'll talk a little bit more about this in the cons section, but there is such a thing as lack of social time. And when you're an athlete, it leads to a pretty strict schedule. So you grow close with your teammates and you find that community and social time through practice and the other team events. My mid distance group grew very close and are all guys that I still keep in pretty close contact with. And even outside the team, I grew close with other athletes on campus, whether that was people that I met in the dorms my first two years of school, people that I met in the dining hall since all the athletes at Tennessee share a dining hall or just people that I, I would see around. And I know not everyone had that experience, but I was really, really blessed to have great community in my four years at Tennessee. So pro tip for the high school athletes that are about to go to college, as well as the college athletes that haven't found good community, you must seek it out. A lot of people will wait around and expect community and friends to just fall into their lap. And sometimes it can happen that way, but more often than not, you have to be the one to seek it out and take the initiative. So now onto the cons. While the D1 experience was great, it was also one of the most challenging things I've ever done in my life. So point number one is you don't have a normal college life. Now, non-athletes are gonna hear me say that and maybe get offended by the statement because they think I'm saying we're better than them. When I'm really just making the point that on top of school, we have a sport that takes up all our time and it's basically a job while we're still expected to maintain good grades put ourselves in positions to get jobs and still somehow maintain a social life and earn some money. So yeah, it's not a normal college life. It also meant a lot of breaks either didn't happen or were cut short. We had summers off, but most of the time, track would bleed into June and we usually came back to school a few weeks early. Fall breaks, there were some years that I got to go on breaks, some years I was at school training and I never had a spring break with track. This really depends on the coaching staff, but you aren't gonna have the same breaks like everyone else. Your days are practically scheduled out for you between practice, lifts, recovery, meetings, class, and all the other extracurricular events. There's not many holes in your schedule. Not to mention you're traveling most weekends when you're in season while still balancing school and everyday life. 
and it really was a grind, but it also made me extremely efficient with using my time. From the outside looking in, it definitely is a lot more time consuming than a lot of people realize. And as an athlete, you're forced to get really good at balancing all these different things and still performing at a high level, which leads right into point number two. So point number two is high expectations. When you join a college team, there's expectations that come with it. These coaches expect you to come in, to work hard, to improve over time, and then to go out on race day and show it. It can be cutthroat. For some people, this expectation and pressure comes with anxiety, with stress. These feelings can spiral and take an emotional and physical toll on you. I had seasons where the mental and emotional stress that I felt would manifest itself physically and I wasn't ever able to go out, put together a good race and go run good times. So these high expectations can make some athletes feel like they need to constantly prove themselves and unfortunately they become all consumed by running and even do whatever it takes to reach the top. They'll run through injuries, they'll neglect their mental health and personally I think it's why some athletes will even go as far to cheat or use performance enhancers because these high expectations have brought them to a place where they feel like they have to do anything and everything to reach the top and achieve success. Now the best athletes and ones that find success at this level are the ones that use pressure for them. They view it as a privilege, as fuel, as an opportunity. Expectations build them up instead of breaking them down. Personally, I believe that the expectations and pressure broke me down at multiple points in college because I had the wrong mindset about it. But when I was able to harness this energy correctly, it led to my best performances. Now, a pro tip. I talked earlier about using your resources. This is a perfect example. Go talk to sports psychologists. If you're someone that's struggling to get the mental side right, if you're struggling with pressure and the expectations, go talk to a sports psychologist. Your mind is what's holding your body back from going and performing at its best. And when you can get this dialed in and get to a point where pressure is privilege, you're going to toe that line and look forward to that chance to face those expectations and face that pressure. Point number three is it's a business. The reality is college sports are business. Coaches are brought in to win championships. They do this by bringing in and developing good athletes and ultimately an athlete's performance is what gets them paid. You're an investment for these coaches so they're always gonna make the best business decision. Sometimes it's one that doesn't make sense and oftentimes can be one you don't agree with, but it's what they think will help benefit the program the most. As someone who just loves the sport of running, track quickly became a job because of this dynamic and was honestly what I hated the most about it. I would always tell people, I love running, I like track. The business and politics side took the fun out of it for me, and is a harsh reality of college sports that I never realized until I got there. So there's an in-depth rundown on the pros and cons of college running. This was just what I noticed in my four years as a D1 runner, it's my perspective and my experience, so it's very likely that it could be different for those of you watching. Now, for those of you that are looking to compete in college, be sure you love it. It gets serious pretty fast, and if you don't love the sport and love the grind, it's going to be very hard to last your entire time there and compete at a high level. I really hope this encourages you to be diligent in your search process to look for the best fit, not the most attractive school. I've said this in past videos, but D1 isn't for everyone. Keep your options open, look for the best fit, and search for schools that you like outside of just the sport. Now overall, the four years of college track were some of the most exciting and challenging times of my life. I loved it and it pushed me more than anything else I've ever done. It was a roller coaster at times, but it was an experience I wouldn't trade for the world. That's all for today's video. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see y'all next time.